The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. I'm often asked what drives the deer farming industry and I have to tell you what drives it is hunting, deer hunting. Uh, white-tailed deer are the number one most popular big game animal in North America and because of that uh, there's a tremendous amount of hunting pressure in every single state. Uh, here in Kentucky, Kentucky has got beautiful habitat, rolling hills and lots of tall hardwoods and it's beautiful but the problem is is that uh, the land has become fragmented and it's because of land fragmentation that people are finding it harder and harder to manage for trophy deer. So what do you do? Well these people that uh, want to manage for trophy deer and can't do so because they may only have two or three hundred acres or five hundred acres and the neighbors are going to shoot every single thing they try to grow, they put up a high fence. When they put up a high fence they want the best genetics possible and where they get those genetics they get them from a deer farmer. I'm Henry Woodard, and we're here at Woodard Whitetails of Kentucky in Glasgow, Kentucky. Our farm here is 220 acres. It's uh, rolling hills. It's, uh, we have a lot of hardwoods, and it's uh, just beautiful country. We try to grow, uh, you know, pretty much all flavors. Uh, we have people that like, you know, big non-typicals. We have people that like typicals. So, you know, what we try to do is we try to produce a, a variety. All right, so we started out in the two-year-old pen here, and how many bucks you got in here? We've got about 20 in here, Keith. Okay. The, uh, I guess the, all the yellow tags in, that's a two-year-old. Yes, sir. Okay, that's correct. So, so uh, a lot of times the different uh, age class of deer, people use different color tags. Okay, so I guess yellow consistent to the farm. Yellow is consistent. Years, or actually three years ago, so they're two-year-olds. Yes, okay. all yellow is all, all two-year-old right now. Okay, well, I was here, I don't know how many years ago, all right? And I'm just telling you, the improvement on the genetics is phenomenal. I mean, I'm taking a look at that, like that guy right there is beautiful. Who is this right here? He's yellow 923. Who is that? That's uh, a Mr. Incredible's full brother. He is uh, Triple Crown on... Uh, Gladiator 2 on Hardcore on Bonnie. Okay, Bonnie is a, is a bomb. I mean, going back and look at the pedigree, she is she is unbelievable. But when we show you the pedigree on him, he's the exact same breeding as Mr. Incredible then. A absolutely, full brother, two years uh, younger. Okay, all right, Mr. Incredible was a incredible deer here. Okay, who is that right there? And he's beautiful too. Yeah, that uh, he, he is 933. Okay. Uh, he doesn't have a name just yet, but we're gonna name him. He is out of Second Amendment. Second Amendment was out of a buck that uh, was Orange 74. He was a gladiator, Tucson, really productive. I mean, we we used him a little bit here, and Joe used him a little bit over at his farm, Joe Miller. And uh, this guy has a has a great look, a great just you know mainframe typical buck. Mm -hmm. And so we will we will use him as a breeder also this year. Okay. The younger deer, the better genetic deer. And uh, and, and right now, Henry's got, uh, and Jennifer, you know, his wife, is up at the deer barn, and she's feeding a bunch of the little fawns, okay, a bunch of the does. And so you'll notice the deer are real gentle. All the deer are, because you spend a lot of time here. But uh, the better genetics, the best genetics on the farm are in that deer barn right now. Now it's time for viewer feedback. All right, so this comes to me off of Facebook Messenger from a guy by the name of Clem. It says, when do most breeders make breeding decisions and why then? Clem, I think breeding decisions are made throughout the year and they're made a little bit at a time as you, as you watch these deer progress. And through the summertime, the decisions become more clear. And as you're looking at these deer getting bigger and bigger and bigger, you start going back and looking at the pedigrees. And typically, the final breeding decisions are made at the end of the summer. It's for that reason that deer breeders love to visit other deer farms late in the summer to be able to see exactly what has happened to the deer. Uh, there's one big thing that is now being considered when it comes to making breeding decisions. It's called the, uh, through NADAR, it's the CWD susceptibility test. And not just are we trying to grow the biggest deer, but we're trying to grow those that are not susceptible to chronic wasting disease. Clem, that's a good question. If y'all have a question for me, you can head over to Facebook or you can shoot me an email. I'd love to hear from you. So life on a farm is pretty cool, okay? The deer farming lifestyle is what I think that most people really want to enjoy. 
And so it's for that reason that uh, not just Henry's out here with his wife, loving each and every minute of it, but uh, they've got their kids and their grandkids and uh, they're gonna pass it down from generation to generation. Of course, I've known Jennifer as long as I've known Henry and she's awesome. She knows as much about deer almost as Henry, seriously. So when Henry's off there doing this with somebody, I'm over there listening to her because like, if I could learn one piece of advice from her, I want to. And so she's with these deer from the, all day long. I mean, it's not uncommon. You're gonna see her in the pens working. You're gonna see her in the farm barn taking care of them. She loves these deer and she knows each and every single one of them. Tell me how you've done things the hard way. You have, you've done things the hard way. The easy way would be to do embryos. Tell everybody about uh, doing things the way you've done things. Well, you know, we've, we've never uh, had an embryo program. We've never, you know, uh, went that route. We've always just, you know, focused on trying to, uh, you know, breed our deer up the old fashioned way. And, uh, you know, we pay a lot of attention to our does. And, you know, I believe in line breeding. Um, if you if you feel like you're breeding with the best lines in the country, and I've tried to focus on doing that and uh, pound that into our herd, and I, I, I really pay attention to the does. And you know, o over the years, I mean, we've you know I can't name all the all the power does I guess that, that some people would call them that we've uh, we've had, and. You know, today, I mean, some of the does that we've got here today are better than some of the big name does that we've had in the past because, you know, we've got generations of breeding and uh, them right. we've, got them, we've got them bred up and we've got those does in the right places in pedigree. We've got to keep pushing. We've got to keep got, pushing. Got, got to keep pushing, realizing that 19 years ago, you wouldn't have thought you'd had deer like this and wait till you see the yearlings. They're going to blow your mind. But um, how important is the North American Deer Registry to you? Oh, it's, it's, it's very important. Um, you know, the registry, I mean, the things, the technology that they're able to do now, um, you, you know, it, it's going to take us to the next level. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like that it's very important. It's a key part of, you know, it's just one of the components that, that we need to use and utilize to help us to move forward. And the, the North American Deer Registry, you've seen and heard me talk about it for years and years, that these pedigrees that we show you on the show, okay? They're all uh, through the registry, the North American Deer Registry. It's like AKC, the American Kennel Club, has got a registry for dogs. We have a registry for deer. And it's not just for the lineage anymore, the genetics, uh, the information that we're getting. And so North American Deer Registry now has the way to test these deer to see who is more or less susceptible to chronic wasting disease. And that's a phenomenal thing, that you could only do this with a captive herd. And so what they do, they've got researchers from all over the world that have got the best knowledge and the best science to be able to determine if this deer is more susceptible and this deer is less susceptible. Breeders now are making breeding decisions not just based upon antler size, but CWD susceptibility. So there's deer breeding in lots of different states, but in Kentucky, I think Kentucky has got probably the best market period right now. Uh, but if you're watching the TV show and you're from Kentucky, you've got a small piece of property that can't be used really for anything else, and you ought to consider the deer market. Tell everybody how good it is. Well, Kentucky, uh, you know, we're fortunate. We've got a state, uh, you know, Department of Ag that those guys are just absolutely phenomenal to work with. Uh, we had a meeting just here this last week with uh, Department of Ag and Fish and Wildlife. Same thing there. Uh, you know, we're all working together. We realize that, you know, uh, our, we have common goals. And so we're trying to focus on the things that, you know, uh, all of us, you know, uh, want to accomplish and that we can work together to accomplish. And so that, that helps our market here because of the fact that we've got great agencies to work with. It's a, it's a great state. I mean, Kentucky has a reputation for producing, you know, a lot of Boone and Crockett, you know, uh, bucks also. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, and, and we've got great habitat here. And there's a lot of places that may be, you know, old rocky ground that's not good for cattle or, cro or row crops, but it's, it's good deer country. Right, right. And so um, I, I think that, 
you know, all those things, it, it, it provides a lot of opportunities and it helps us, you know, here in our market. There's no question that Kentucky is, if it's not the best market right now for deer farming, it's one of the top three for sure. All right, so we're in the yearling pen right now. And uh, there's one buck in here that I know is not a yearling, okay? That blue tag buck, that's champ, isn't it? That's champ. Okay, I mean, take a look at that. Uh, we were here years ago. I've been coming to Kentucky for a long, long time. I've been here, I don't know how many times, to Woodward Whitetails. And years ago, we filmed Champ, and he had the tongue hanging out then, too. That sure doesn't bother the way he grows. It doesn't. I mean, he, he's, uh, you know, he's put on a tremendous rack every year. And What uh, caused that? You know, I, I think it was some nerve damage from when he was a fawn mm -hmm. uh, that caused it. But uh, we, we, his, his name's Champ, but I kind of nicknamed him Michael Jordan because his tongue ha hangs out all the time. So, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, Have y'all used him to breed? We, we have, we've got some really nice uh, nice yearlings on the ground out of Champ mm -hmm. this year. Well, when you take a look at the, well, there's two yellow tag bucks in here. Those are two year olds, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, the rest of them, all these are yearlings? All of them are yearlings. You gotta be kidding me. With the exception of Champ and the two yellow tags, the rest of them are yearlings. What do you think? I mean, that is amazing. I am, I'm shocked. I mean, that guy right there, is, I promise you he's 30 inches wide. I promise you he's 30 inches wide. Yeah, actually. Uh, I think, you know, and I bet you that one is too. Yeah. yeah. And that one, there's so many of them in here. What amazes me, Henry, is the fact that, I mean, when, when I was here years ago, your yearling pin didn't look like this. You have like taken the next step. We have, we, I, I think the last time you were here, maybe our biggest yearling was probably 178 inches that year. And our next biggest was about 140. And, uh, wow. you know, it, well, it's... Well, now, I mean, I don't know how big these deer are, but if you take 178 inch deer was the biggest when I was here last, there's a lot of them that are over 178. I mean, way, way, way over 178 inches. You've got, these deer are phenomenal. And again, they were all born here. Every, every single deer uh, was born here. And they're not embryos. There's no embryos. That's amazing, okay? now. Tell me about that guy. That guy is so wide, he's so massive for a yearling. Tell me who that is. Uh, well, his number is 0007, but uh, we decided we're gonna get rid of one of those zeros and we're gonna call him 007. We're gonna call it, name him James Bond. Okay. Uh, Agent 007, but we actually uh, had to uh, cut a drop on him on his, on his uh, left side the other day. And, we had him down, he was 32 inches inside and he's still going out, so. As a yearling? As a yearling. Okay, so the pedigree on him? Pedigree is brain freeze on uh, Orange 57, which is Mr. Incredible's dam. Yep. So, you know, there again, that doe just shows up, you know, in all these great deer. And uh, so, you know, Orange 57 is Gladiator 2 on Hardcore on Bonnie. Goes and, back uh, to Bonnie. Goes back to Bonnie. So, you know, the does matter. Uh, I mean, you know, we really focus on the does. And uh, most of the time, when you start, you know, picking out different bucks, there's a reason why and the reasons it, uh, on the good ones is because of those does. Well, who is number 21? Look at that one. Well, 20, 21 is special also. Uh, 21 is, uh, that's a Mr. Incredible son. I mean, there you go again with Orange 57. Uh, so he's Mr. Incredible on High Heat, on uh, Secret Weapon, on Max Bow, on Hardcore, on Bonnie. Okay, if somebody wants more information, give them a phone number. Our phone number is 423-595-8898. And that's my personal cell number. And call Henry and come on out here. You owe it to yourself. If you're in the Kentucky area, you think about getting into deer farming, Henry can hook you up. All right, so when I come out here with Henry, I mean, I've known him for a long, long time and he's been a legend in the industry for, well, ever since I've been in the industry, everybody talks about Henry Woodard and uh, they talk about his deer. He has wound up taking uh, nearly two decades of uh, trial and error and trial and error knowledge and growing some of the biggest legendary deer in the industry and he has made a name for himself. When you take a look at, uh, you know, Henry will go out in the pens every day and uh, he feeds these, you know, like his buck, limbs, okay? You watch him take the limbs out there and feed the deer. Uh, 
the deer love the leaves, okay? And he spends a lot of time with them. He goes in the pens every single day. He puts the feed in the troughs and uh, he spends time looking at them every day, evaluating them. And so uh, as, as he goes throughout his daily process, he's evaluating each and every single deer on the farm, trying to figure out what his next business move is gonna be. And it works for him. Okay, so you're gonna breed these yearling bucks, these choice yearling bucks. Are you gonna collect semen out of them? Absolutely. Uh, if, if we're gonna breed with a buck, it's always been, you know, something that we've done that we collect semen on a buck. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that way if, you know, something happens with him at two, and once we see his offspring on the ground, we have an opportunity to go back and, you know, uh, create sisters, brothers. Okay. That, that's the old fashioned way. That's the old fashioned way. Before we had the registry, literally that was the old fashioned way that people did things, okay? And, and, and you, you know, you've done it the old fashioned way. So you're gonna collect semen out of these guys. And I guess if somebody wanted to buy some of that semen, they could? Yeah, a absolutely. Uh, we, any, any buck that, that we breed with, we will have semen for sale. And, uh, you know, we'd, we'd love for any, anyone that's interested to give us a call. So tell me, how big is the farm? How many pens do you have? And how many deer on it? We've got about 220 acres, you know, about 20, 20 something pens. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful piece of property. And what I love about it is our climate here, uh, compared to South Texas, I mean, you know, it, it's a, uh, you get winter here. We, we do get winter and uh, had, a, had a pretty good one this last year, but uh, the summers, it gets hot and humid, but you know, not as hot. Mm -hmm. well, and, you've got uh, a big fawn barn with a, a lot of the doe fawns in there. And how many deer total do you have? Total about 240 mature animals on our place right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got uh, approximately 170 fawns on the ground this year. Wow, that so. is amazing. So do you sell, I guess you sell fawns, does, and bucks? Absolutely, we sell we sell fawns, does, uh, bucks, and semen uh, out of those bucks. And, and bread does, I'm assuming. Yes, bread does. Okay, well after looking at your deer, I can tell you, I'm, it doesn't surprise me, okay, because I've, I've known you so long, I've seen you evolve into what you've become. And yeah, you are a Hall of Famer. I mean, not just in Kentucky, but in the deer business in general. Your efforts do not go unrecognized, I'll put it that way. And people from all over the country, I bet every single state, from Wisconsin to Florida to Texas to New York, I bet every single state has got offspring that came from Henry Woodard. And folks, I mean, this, is a, this show right here shows you just how good he's done it the old fashioned way, and it is working. Okay, if somebody wants more information, give them a phone number. 423-595. 8898, and that's my personal sale. Call him up. He's a good guy. I've known him almost 20 years. And so call him up. He'd love to see you. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. If you're watching our show online, go ahead and you can comment below and make sure and subscribe to our channel while you're at it. And if you're not watching online, head on over to the YouTube channel and do so. My name is Keith Warren, and we'll see you next time. Okay, so you've got property and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.